Good evening, everyone. And on behalf of the Theosophical Society, I welcome you all to this 14th session of the series of talks that have been organized by the Theosophical Society under the theme of Wisdom for Living. The necessity of this humble but profound initiative to alleviate human and therefore overall suffering by creating awareness was felt due to the three major reasons that I can think of. The first, human mind, which is the seat of intellect and the storehouse of knowledge, which is not wisdom, has evolved a lot. But the heart, which is the seed of wisdom, compassion, and love has been ignored a lot, if not completely. And which is the reason that we, have, we all have inherited this world full of the challenges, whether it is in the form of violence, in any form, from micro to macro level, or global environmental crisis and even the challenge of the existence of the planet itself. We are preparing to land humans on Mars but we do not have yet found out the way to the heart of our neighbor of, or our own. The size of our houses have grown, grown bigger and bigger and they have become grand. But the selfishness or the pettiness that comes along with it is overwhelming. <clears throat> and therefore, this small humble initiative in the direction of helping humanity is thought of and why this initiative? Because the service can be done in different forms. In the form of giving food, in the form of giving clothes. But the very first three words of the mission statement of the Theosophical Society, which are to serve humanity, I feel in a way impose a duty on Theosophical Society to take proactive and specific steps in the direction which is beyond mere physical alleviation of suffering. Because this surfing service can be done in different ways. But what the mission of the Theosophical Society is to serve humanity by cultivating an ever deepening understanding and realization of the ageless wisdom, spiritual self-transformation, and the unity of all life. And maybe you all are aware already or not, but this unity of all life, the realization of unity of this all life, was in very brief words penned down penned down by Dr. Annie Besant in 1923 in the form of what we now call as universal invocation. And I <coughs> invite you all to join me in this invocation. You may remain seated if you want. And following each word of it, you'll see the wisdom that underlies it. O oh, hidden life, vibrant in every atom, O oh, hidden light shining in every creature. O oh, hidden love embracing all in oneness. May all who feel themselves as one with thee know they are therefore one with every other.
And this realization that we are all interconnected, if not on the physical plane or in the visible world, but in some invisible words, that realization is the real wisdom. And now I come to the third reason for this series of talk three in my own understanding, and that is to dispel a misconception that wisdom or spirituality can only be found in monasteries or forests or by leaving this world and being alone, cutting oneself off with the rest of humanity. But there is no such division in fact. It is all in the mind. And therefore in this series of talks, we try to have the speakers from the across the spectrum of humanity, whether it is business, arts, fitness, ecology, science, spirituality, and not just any individuals, but individuals who have found ways to apply spiritual principles to their work and living, which is not only desirable, but also utterly necessary in the contemporary times where the self-centered way of living has led to the situation that I have just mentioned before of different challenges that we are facing at the global macro level or micro level. And till now we have had talks on the subjects like spiritual ideals, filters, science, ecology, arts, etc. Today we are going to focus on one of the issues or the subjects created by human mind for making our life better and comfortable but also can be a potential challenge to the whole existence as so many other inventions that have been done by the human mind have proved to be depends on what mind is using that power and I think you already know by the title of today's subject that is we are talking about the artificial intelligence and the subject for today's talk is hybrid leadership embracing the AI revolution and the esteemed speaker Ms. Mahalakshmi Saravanan whom we have today with us to speak on this subject is someone who is a trendsetter, a visionary and a soldier of women empowerment, as you can see the first slide of the presentation itself, and who has an indomitable energy and optimism not only to imagine and plan, but also to implement those plans into the visible world. Her vision is to empower women in business to their business success and her mission is to create a sustainable ecosystem for women in business. And no wonder that the Women Entrepreneurs of India, the organization of which she is the founder, has become an internationally recognized brand which supports and encourages women to become entrepreneurs and she has won not once but twice the international award for the same. If I start reading her bio data as given to me which includes her tremendous achievements I am sure that we will be here for the next couple of hours listening to me only and there will be no more time remaining for us to listen to her. So I will share with you the essence of her journey and then we'll get the opportunity to hear, listen to her. Mahalakshmi Saravanan is an internationally recognized first generation social entrepreneur and a TEDx speaker. She was born in Keti, a small village in the Nilgiris and she belongs to the indigenous community called Badagas. And I came to know upon researching because the word badaga suddenly created some curiosity in my mind and I thought what does it mean 
and I came to know upon researching, she may correct me if I am wrong, that the word Badaga means northerner, coming from the north. Okay. So she became an accidental entrepreneur with no knowledge in business and she started her business from scratch. And today she has become a role model for thousands of aspiring women entrepreneurs. She has been invited as a motivational speaker at major national and international conferences, government organizations like Indian Space Research Organization, National Academy of Direct Taxes, industry events, corporates like Infosys, Amazon, Accenture, Indian Oil Corporation, Koromandal Murugappa, Hindustan Unilever, and the list goes on and on and on. But very importantly, what apart from these presentations or workshops that she has done, more from where I see it, that she has gone to numerous colleges and schools all over India to talk to the future of humanity. The students in those colleges and making them aware. She has also been a speaker in various international webinars and one of the most significant aspect of her work has been the faculty development that she has conducted in several colleges in Chennai. And in this process, can you imagine, she is fortunate to have touched more than 150,000 individuals, including government officials, entrepreneurs, scientists, corporate employees, students, rural women. And how and why? Just because of her passion to connect and empower them. Her interviews have featured in various TV channels, Podigai TV, Kalaigna TV, Makal TV, and her upcoming interview is on ZTV, and in various print media like the Hindu, Economic Times, Financial Express, and many other regional newspapers have covered her activities. Mahalakshmi Sarvanan has 18 plus years of total experience, 14 of which are in business and about four and a half in academics. As an academically inclined person, she completed her master's in nutrition from Avinash Ilangam University and has cleared the national and state level exams, namely RSNET and SLET, and was certified as an assistant professor. And the final line in her introduction that touched me very much and why I think we have her here, that her service-minded nature has helped her impact lives of women who aspire to start and grow their business. So without wasting any more time, I invite Mahalakshmi Saravanan to share her thoughts with us. Good afternoon. How are you all? Let's clap for ourselves. Yeah, can we clap for ourselves? This space looks so divine. Maybe the presence of a lot of divine souls, service-minded ones. Uh, this session is not going to be technical. It's not going to be completely on AI. Uh, it'll be a bit of my journey, a bit about AI and how, uh, if used in moderation, we could take advantage of the technology. Right. So let me go ahead and uh, ask a question. So before I go ahead, let me thank Tim and Ramkumar sir and Nehar. Shikhar. Shikhar. Okay. Thank you so much for the kind introduction and having me here. It's such a privilege because um, I never thought I would be here in such a great organization. I think um, I'll have to learn a lot from you. So today it's going to be a knowledge exchange sort of thing. Let it be an interactive one, and I hope. Uh, I would be able to do justice to what I've been invited for. So the agenda is simple. We're going to talk about hybrid leadership and we're going to figure out how AI and hybrid leadership when combined together can make wonders. And uh, we're going to combine human and AI and we're going to figure out how this can change the world in the best way. 
Of course, AI tools, cons of AI, and uh, creator economy versus knowledge economy, we'll go one by one. Okay, now this is for you. So here is a picture of a happy family, but there is an unusual detail that only the sharp eyed will notice. So you're going to let me know what are your thoughts on this picture. This has nothing to do with today's topic. Forget it. Forget AI, forget technology, forget everything. It's just a picture and you let me know what thoughts come to your mind when you look at this image. No mobiles. No mobiles? Great. <laughs> so let's give it up for Shikhar. Yeah, he's a sharp-eyed person. Yeah. Next. We'll go ahead with five, because if we have to go through all the uh, data, then there are millions of details which you can grab from this. Again, we will not be having the time to interact. So we'll have only five, five answers. So first one, yourself. Second, yes, ma'am. Absolutely, they're encouraging each other. Number three. Kindness. Okay, great. So let us give it up for ma'am and ma'am. Number four. All are smiling. All are smiling. Yes, of course, yes. <laughs> oh, wow, yes. So more thoughts coming in? Yeah, please. Ah, true, yeah. Oh, yeah, generations, true. I'll have to stop here because let us discuss offline. There are, as I told you, there are millions of comments for one particular Im you know, image. Just imagine varied thoughts. And each one of us here are unique, aren't we? Basically bonding. Basically bonding. And some would have observed that the elderly uh, person there doesn't have a chair. And some would have observed that uh, that man is looking at the other person. Maybe that girl, maybe she is, you know, there are a lot of thoughts, so let us not go into it. This has nothing to do with today's session. I just want to kind of connect with you all. So now, this has connected with today's session. Yeah. So which country has built the world's long longest train? If you guess it, uh, let me let me complete it. <laughs> you seem to be so enthusiastic. <laughs> let me complete it. So if you guess it right, uh, no googling. Okay, no Google, no smartphone, nothing. Okay. So if you guess it right, I'm going to perform. And if you guess it wrong, then you may have to perform. You'll have to raise your hands and tell me the uh, country with uh, the data, as in how long the train is and how many coaches. No. So each one of you here is going to perform, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So Switzerland. So it has set the record for world's longest passenger train, which is about six to six, six feet with 100 coaches. Can you imagine? Isn't it amazing? The next question. Are, are these questions new to you or have you heard of these? Yeah. New? You have heard of it? Uh -huh. So no performance. Myself and the audience, no performance <laughs> because you know the answer. <laughs> Good that you told me up friend. So have you seen a train running on the road without tracks? You did? Did you watch any video? No, I just saw a picture. Okay, can you recollect where uh, was it? Uh, was it in China? Absolutely, yes. So maybe you could um, take a pic of this particular uh, facebook.com slash reel uh, or I'll share it with Rampamasa because now we don't have the time to go through the videos. You can go through that. Just imagine the train can actually run on the road with whatever sensors are available on the road and throughout the passage. And it actually bends through the roads. There are cars going on the road, there are uh, buses going on the road, and there is this particular train which looks like a tram, which looks like a train, which looks like a bus. Okay, you can watch this video later. It's, it's super interesting to see how the uh, technology is making waves in China. Okay, today we are here to talk about AI, but then, see, I'm not an AI expert, but I've been into technology for the past 13 years, prior to which I was uh, a nutritionist. And um, did anyone come across this in today's Hindu paper? So what happened was, 
I'm not trying to start with a con, but then since I came across this article on uh, today's Hindu, I thought I'll let you know what has happened exactly. All of us know that many um, senior citizens and many even youth, everyone has fallen prey for a lot of cyber crimes, right? And this today's crime is so uh, technical that what actually happened was someone from Tamil Nadu, usually a lot of complaints come from Bangalore, but someone in Tamil Nadu received a call, an IVR call, and it is asking for the OTP, to, just to confirm that no one is misusing the account. So the person who has been on the call, he just thought, okay, it is an IVR call, it is authentic. He believed it. And he immediately gave the OTP to the caller, the IVR caller. Okay. The next moment, someone in Karnataka is placing an order on a top aggregator, food aggregator platform for about 5,000 rupees. And this amount, he didn't have in his bank account. There is an app called this Lazy Pay, wherein people have been made lazy through technology and even the payments are making us lazy. There is an app called this Lazy Pay and this Lazy Pay lets people to pay later. You buy and then pay later. So what had happened, this particular uh, victim, he uh, connected the uh, food aggregator platform with the, uh, what do you call, the lazy pay. So unfortunately, uh, the scammers scammed his, uh, you know, credentials and they took his uh, data and they started uh, ordering food. And there's a call from the food aggregator platform that here is an order. He's calling from Karnataka and he's telling that he's in Tamil Nadu. The victim is in Tamil Nadu, whereas the, uh, the other person is calling and telling that, uh, see, you have placed an order, can I come and deliver it? So when this person tried to access the food aggregator platform, it is inaccessible. So just imagine what sort of scammer they are and how they are trying to manipulate and get credentials of our mobile phones, right? We have to be safe. So I am trying to let you know that uh, you know, do not fall prey for these because I've met so many people who have fallen into this scam and so many other scams. Let us be aware. Yeah. So today's Hindu paper it is. Okay, so coming to hybrid leadership, I need not tell each one of you what leadership is all about and what hybrid leadership is all about. Let us just figure out what exactly is required in order to become a hybrid leader. Can anyone guess what exactly is required? Of course, all of you know who a leader is, how to become a leader, leadership. You all have leadership qualities in you. So coming to the hybrid leadership, why is it necessary and what skill is required to become a hybrid leader? Compassionate? Okay. Yes, yes. Tech savvy, okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Correct. Correct. So humanity is a very appropriate term. And when, it, when we say humanity, there's something called self-awareness. Is it not? So self-awareness is the important skill for someone to become a hybrid leader. If a person is not empowered, he, if he doesn't know who he is really and he is, if he is not authentic with, with himself or herself, then he cannot become a hybrid leader. When you're not true to yourself, you're not going to become a leader at all. And then comes the hybrid leadership, right? So coming to AI, of course, AI has a lot of, uh, you know, like, it is a vast ocean. I'm not going to talk in depth about AI. I'm not an expert. I'm going to tell you uh, certain important facts about AI and how we can actually use it for our good and, of course, use it for the community as well. Okay. So when it comes to AI, it is a lot of data. And uh, with the help of data, we can analyze, we can predict, we can do a lot of decision making, and we can also to some extent, understand. I mean, uh, we. I mean, we cannot replace a human ability. I'm sorry. We cannot replace a human ability, and we cannot. Uh, AI cannot really, uh, you know, come up with emotions or empathy or these human qualities. AI can never replace. People think that oh, AI is going to take my job. AI is going to make me, you know, sober. No, definitely no. AI will not replace jobs. Rather, it will create more jobs. And of course, these certain things. Have you heard of EQ? 
emotional quotient, right? This cannot be replaced by AI at all at any cost. So let us be clear that technology is a tool. It is an enabler which will help us do things fast, but that itself is not the only thing that we need in our business or in our life. Yeah? See, look at uh, a lot of opportunity that has come with AI. So many new jobs have come and what is required is reskilling. So right now, so many people are thinking that, you know, uh, only if I learn AI, I'll get a job. Not necessarily. You have to know AI to some extent. And that is not the only domain which has scope. There are a lot of other opportunities uh, in the job space, which, you know, new jobs are coming up, like data scientist, cybersecurity engineer, prompt engineer, you know, a lot of new jobs are coming up. So it is up to you to decide which way you have to go. So here I'm addressing a heterogeneous group of people who have vast experience, but this might apply to youth. Maybe you can spread the word and let them know that, you know, to some extent, if they are not aware of the AI tools, they are going to lag behind in terms of life and also in terms of business or career. So it is more about data driven decision making and when we combine, when we leverage both the human capabilities and the AI capabilities, we are going to come up with a lot of innovations. But do you think creativity can be done through AI? To some extent only, but creativity, only human mind can be as creative as it can be, right? It cannot do that. And of course, AI can identify the risks and opportunities and forecasting outcomes based on different scenarios. There is a port, I think in Japan, which is completely unmanned and it actually works uh, without any uh, you know, help from the humans. Such huge logistics, uh, you know, the whole thing is operated with the help of AI. To some extent, yes, it is helping us save time and predict more and come up with great decisions. Uh, but then we have to use it in moderation, be it the tools or whatever. Of course, all of us know that uh, when we combine these, we can schedule meetings and then we can automate reports, we can track expenses, submit receipts and enter data. All these monotonous tasks can be handled by um, AI, which will save a lot of time, right? So now for the senior citizens, I came across a lot of interesting apps that are actually helping the senior citizens. These are AI powered apps and they promote independence, they monitor chronic diseases and mental health is also part of AI. You would have heard of the wearable devices, right? All the senior citizens use in order to uh, monitor their health. And there is one device actually, uh, this one, this Elik, it's a tabletop device which will actually be a friend to the senior citizen. It is available, I think, um, on certain uh, platforms. But then what happens is when uh, there is loneliness amongst elderly people. This is actually solving that and it is able to build a bond between the elderly and uh, I mean, the robot builds a bond, but then it cannot replace a human bonding, right? So we are talking more about the humanity here. So I always tell 100% human connection should be there. That's when we build the trust, the relationship and everything happens here. Only that bot cannot solve issues. Maybe to some extent it can spare uh, some time for the senior citizens. Yes. So for the youth, as I told you before, there are a lot of avenues op opening up. And I just want to tell you one important statistics by World Economic Forum, which, you know, you, you can um, um, share it with the, um, what do you call your friends or peers. So World Economic Forum, WEF, anticipates that AI will generate 12 million more jobs that it displaces by 2025. And India houses a talent base of 416k AI professionals as of August 2023, as opposed to the current demand approximated 629k, a figure expected to surge to 1 million by 2026. And this is the report by WNET, that is VBOX, National Employability Test. So just imagine so many new avenues are going to come up. So the, the, to some extent, there is un unemployment issues, but then to a bigger extent, there's a huge opportunity lying ahead. But each one of us are using AI in some way or the other, aren't we? Can you give me an example of real life situation wherein you are using the technology AI? Phones, okay. And then Alexa, Siri, yeah. Maps. Maps. Facial recognitions, payments what not, right? Knowingly or unknowingly, AI has become a part of our life. So now it is our duty to integrate it at the same time, not overuse it, right? 
Yeah, these are some of the tools. Maybe you can take a snapshot. I have used a lot of tools and it really saves a lot of time. For example, um, let's say the same topic, if I have to create on hybrid leadership embracing uh, AI revolution, it would take hardly a minute for me to create a three minutes videos. And within five minutes, I can create thousands of videos. So businesses need to save time. They have to be frugal. So there are a lot of free tools available which will help one save time, cost, and also create a lot of videos and content and we need not depend on any of the uh, content writers or developers or graphic designers, whoever it is. So if you don't have um, the necessary team, then you could make use of the AI technology. But then you cannot really assure that it's 100% correct. You have to kind of vet it and then present it to uh, public. So these are some of the tools, you know, the to-do list can help you in doing your to-do. And you know, for time saving, Calendly, Grammarly, I think it is integrated on your Gmail and it auto corrects a lot of AI tools. So if you go one by one, it's going to take a lot of time. So I really want to interact, so I'm going to go quick on this uh, slide. So cons of AI, yes, there is a greater risk of uh, real life AI. We came across the deep fake issue recently and you know, from the prime minister to the actress, everyone is uh, you know, impacted by this. And as I told you before, lack of creativity and uh, over-reliance on technology. I think today's millennials and Gen Zs, they are more on the tech front. And uh, I, know, I don't know how to present it. Like, lot many children these days are reluctant to talk over phone or talk to people. They are on their devices and they are glued to their devices. They don't even know that, uh, you know, they have to speak in order to connect, communicate in order to connect. These things are missing in today's Gen Z. Luckily, I think we are all blessed that we had a very different uh, life altogether. Of course, unemployment to some extent. Yeah, so when we say embrace AI or uh, become great future uh, hybrid leaders, we mean learn it all. Don't be a know-it-all person. Learn it all. There is always something to learn from each and every person. So learn it all. Of course, adaptive leadership, wherein empathy, learning through reflection, and navigating business environments, creating a win-win solution, all these are part of hybrid leadership. Yes. So age is not a barrier. Uh, I would say my mother-in-law, who is a partner of uh, Women Entrepreneurs India. So this is a unique combination where uh, someone is doing the business with a mother-in-law in, -law in uh, India, in Tamil Nadu, in Chennai. The story is completely different because we women are conservative and most of the TV serials will show uh, mother-in-law and daughter-in-law as a you know, maybe opponent or enemy only, but then we have been able to sustain the business for about uh, 11 years, and I could say that she's a great mentor. She has done her MPhil English literature. She has published more than 20 books. She received accolades from Abdul Kalam when he was a president, and she has received a state award, multiple awards, and she has served the community for about 37 years as a teacher, government teacher, and she has supported 81 families in terms of de-addiction. She has united 81 families together, I think, uh, we have to appreciate her service-minded nature. Luckily, um, even I am service-minded. I think that's how the universe has united both of us uh, to bring uh, the cause of women empowerment through us. Yeah, creator economy, all of us know. During the pandemic, what happened? Each and everyone started cooking. And each and everyone started sharing about the gardening facts. And each and everyone started cleaning the houses, how to clean. You know, even a lot of videos were popping up, right? That is creator economy. Knowledge economy, what do you think about knowledge economy? We are going towards knowledge economy and Tamil Nadu is going to become the knowledge capital very soon. Of course, we are the EV capital of India. Any idea on the knowledge economy? Few years ago, you know, uh, you would have heard of the patent and IP or intellectual property rights. Have you? Let's say for example, um, you create a unique uh, scarf and if that scarf is uh, made completely by you and that is like not available elsewhere, it is a unique thing, then you can go for patent, right? So few years ago, only few thousands of patents were done, you know, maybe 8,000 or 9,000, maybe in 2016. But today, if you look at the number of patents that's been registered in India, it is like 41,000 plus. That is the knowledge economy, a lot of R&D, a lot of, uh, you know, support from the government, a lot of people are interested to, um, uh, you know, apply for patents. So these are part of the business. Why I'm trying to tell you is that going forward, creator economy and knowledge economy goes hand in hand. You just can't be only a creator economy. I've always told a lot of my uh, friends that 
most of the creative people are not good in marketing and most of the marketers are not good in creativity. Am I right or no? Yes, it happens. Maybe there may be exceptions. Let's say, for example, there are beautiful artworks um, in this room. You know, just imagine if the artist is um, great in terms of marketing, be it uh, social media or website or whatever, by now everything will be sold out. Even now it's going to be sold out. But what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, it goes hand in hand. God has given us a lot of skills, but he has also limited us with certain skills so that we are interdependent and we are trying to coexist. Yeah, so all successful people have one thing in common. So what happens, sir? Yeah. So discipline to eat healthy food, discipline to work out regularly, discipline to get up earlier, discipline to never give up, discipline to believe in themselves. I may have a few, I may not have a few, but then it is up to you. It is all individual effort, right? If you want to be successful, you have to take the first step, correct? So these are some of the books I thought might be of use to you. You can go through it and you can, you know, you can Google it. There are a lot of audibles and a lot of, uh, you know, Kindle editions there. Yes. So I am a purpose-driven entrepreneur. So I urge many to become purpose-driven entrepreneur with high hopes 24 by 7. So with that, uh, let me quickly complete this session and go on with an interactive session. I would like to interact with you all more than talk only about AI. Thank you so much for the great opportunity. So the floor is open to questions. My pen name is Maya in cyberspace. I have a problem with this dichotomy, natural intelligence versus artificial intelligence. I am the creator. My brain is the creator of artificial intelligence. True. But we think it is out there and uh, we've got to sort of cater to it. Why? It's a mindset issue, right? So if I think that it is going to be uh, I, the creator of uh, AI. It, you're not. To some extent, you are. But you are not the only person to no. build that AI. Correct? We as humans. We as humans, yes. Uh, we can think like that, but I don't think we have to completely own it. We can't claim that, yes, I, did, uh, I created AI and I'm going to uh, kind of uh, you know, uh, use it completely. I don't think so because it's going to evolve. As humans, you know, the intelligence part of the robo or of the AI device is completely uh, amazing. But then there should be a human who can actually fix things, right? It is not hyper uh, intelligent as we are. Our brain has such a capability in terms of creativity and problem solving. I don't think uh, AI can replace our, uh, you know, brains. It can't. It can't happen at all. Though we are the creators, I think we have to kind of use it for the right purpose and uh, use it in a way that will actually enable uh, businesses or you know uh, employment or uh, you know people or whatever and there has to be a limitation there has to be moderation we cannot simply rely only on AI because other than AI there are so many other things awaiting right so in India if you look at there's a lot of digital divide so we are talking about AI here people don't even know what AI is right so there is the digital divide, the infrastructure challenge is there, and uh, there's a lot of um, technological gaps here. I don't think as uh, a human, we just can't completely rely on uh, AI. It is much more than that. As I told you, empathy, compassion, and you know uh, the trust, the relationship, everything comes outside of AI. I think let us forget that. The session, I thought maybe to give uh, some tips about AI, that's all. My intention is to let you know that these are the tools that uh, you can use to enable whatever work you're doing, but then it's not the only thing that you need in your life. Yes. The second question is the definition of knowledge economy. Because when you talk about uh, under, in, under knowledge, the umbrella of knowledge economy, you have intellectual property. Yes. And that is where you get patents, copyrights, and Correct. trademarks. It's basically protection of a new idea. Yeah. in different ways. Uh, but knowledge economy is bigger. It's vast. Just I just gave you an example yeah. of Tamil Nadu where a lot of people are towards, yeah, right. gearing up towards knowledge economy yeah. in terms of R&D and, you know, that space. Yeah, there is a need it's a bigger thing. To, uh, there is a need uh, for us to define words in context. Exactly. Yeah. In the context of our times and meanings, you know, what, what does it mean? So that we can relate to it properly. Absolutely. So knowledge economy, I just shared... Huh. Yeah. 
Thank you. So knowledge economy, it is a vast ocean. I wanted to talk more about the current scenario in Tamil Nadu where a lot of patents have been filed and people are gearing towards a knowledge economy. So I wanted to club these both, creator economy and knowledge economy. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to ask, because you said the AI is going to create more employment, but at the same time you gave the example of a port in Japan that it's completely, you know, governed by machines and all. So I don't understand that. Is there a contradiction in that or? Yeah. Uh, there are, uh, you know, like the whole port is unmanned, but in order the back end work will be taken care of by the humans. The port asset, the logistic space, that is unmanned. But then the technology, the back end will be handled by humans. The port is unmanned. So, but those jobs that were there in the port uh, now are it's removed? It's not there, it's yes. Not yes. There. Oh, okay. It's not there. It's completely unmanned. You can just Google Japanese port, unmanned port, and you get the data. I just want to clarify Shikhar. Uh, see this, what she used the word reskilling you know, in, uh, during her talk. That's, that's precisely what happens. So that means the same job is not available. You are right. New jobs are created. But the different types of skills are required. Therefore, people need to reskill. Very classic example is in the United States. There is something called the rust belt in the in the Midwestern US. So what happened was the steel industry and the, uh, all you know, uh, hammering jobs they completely disappeared. And then there's completely new type of jobs that are, sorry, completely new types of jobs that are happening. So that's what's happening. I think she very well put it as reskilling. So reskilling jobs are coming up. New jobs, as I told you, prompt engineer. The prompt engineer term itself is new. Right? We are giving a prompt and on chat GPT or whatever and you know, they earn more. You should know how to prompt the software so that you get the output. You just can't type as you are talking to people, be it voice prompt or text, uh, text prompt, whatever it is. We have to know how to key in the right uh, prompt so that we get the right outcome. Yes. Thank you. Hi, my Hi. name is Manjeet. I wanted to ask you, like nowadays, as you know, in hiring, tools are used, right? Apart from that, when we do skill-based assessment, what is your thoughts on that, your take on that, to judge a person's capability by, you know, the AI? Is it uh, good or what are your thoughts I want to understand? See, maybe the initial screening stage, it might help, but then when it goes to the next round of the interview, I don't think we have to completely rely on um, AI. The shortlisting and the profile screening and the first level can be done using the tech tools. I don't recommend uh, the next level interviews to be done by an AI because that is going to screw your interview process. We have to, we have to connect the body language matters, you know, the thought process, their expression matters. The AI is not going to tell you that. But nowadays, even psychometric analysis is there available. are psychometric you, assessments. That, right? Just that is not going to help. Video you interviews. To, video interviews. Absolutely. Can you uh, guess the real body language of a person when he is in front of you or on a video? Let's say this session is happening on a video. Do you think there will be connect? No. The connection happens. See, video interviews are happening. Chatbots are doing the interview, but I don't think that is. Uh, but that should be the norm till the end of the interview. I don't think so. I think maybe the first two can happen, but uh, the higher level of interviews must happen in person so that we understand the emotions of a person. You know, we can't be having a lie detector uh, on the video interview, right? So we have to have a connect because you're going to work as a team, uh, maybe a hybrid. Sometimes you may have to be in the office. I think uh, the human connection has to be there irrespective of whether AI is there or not. I would always, like, if I'm going to hire someone for my organization, maybe the initial thing will be happening on chatbot, but the next level interview will definitely happen in person only. I wouldn't recommend AI for the complete interview process. But uh, I beg to differ. Actually, what is happening nowadays, you might have heard during the pandemic, many people, moonlightning, you have heard about yes. that concept, right? So many technology people mm -hmm. took two, three jobs. They are very good in the skills. We have interviewed them. We have to hire them. 
but afterwards how do you judge the ethics of a person right even if you are sitting in front of me i can't judge you but the ai can so i think that maybe in terms of moonlighting yes but i don't think uh, as a team builder the ai tool can't really find out whether the person is compassionate or empathy i don't think the ai has that kind of capability to find it out maybe moonlighting yes it can but i don't think uh, we can rely 100% on ai i differ on that i agree moonlighting is you know working in one job <laughs> yeah. and you know having multiple jobs in hand it happened moonlighting yes is working in one particular job and also like parallelly they may be working on few more jobs and they may not be actually right. you know uh, working the remote jobs remote it, jobs it happened during the pandemic yes. and yeah. even after the pandemic when the developers exactly. were you know getting the opportunity to work from home so this situation so happened. they may be under the payroll of one company but then they work for other companies without the knowledge of the parent company yeah, yeah. but thank you welcome No, you deal with AI, so I thought maybe you have a question. No? See, I'm not an AI expert, so you can ask questions related to entrepreneurship and how we are supporting women and what sort of uh, you know support we have been uh, offering to a lot of other students and entrepreneurs. Maybe I could speak in that angle. I just chose this topic so that you know, um, to some extent, I educate a few on the digital tools available. That's all. Can you uh, speak about women empowerment? What is it you do exactly? Women are already empowered, sir. Just that we have to enable them to, you know, uh, grow higher. In my case, you know, like maybe I didn't know what my potential was, and my husband has to uh, had to push me so that I uh, came out. I come from a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, modest background, and I didn't have much knowledge in business. But then when I started, when I learned a lot of things, I really think now there are like 15% of women uh, in india who are entrepreneurs women owned businesses if that has to be 50% we have to wait for another 20 30 years and with the pandemic so it it acted as a catalyst many have started the business but the challenges many have um, also got into other jobs they are facing tough times you know like 2023 i could see so many new businesses coming up at the same time so many people have closed their businesses also again it is up to an individual but what i'm trying to tell is that uh, nowadays women are uh, you know like uh, they are looking for this specific information 10 years ago when i started they would call me and tell i want to start a business but today they are coming to us with this specific question i have gst uh, i have this issue what am i supposed to do uh, i am uh, doing this um, uh, you know uh, i'm running this it company how do i raise funds you know specific questions like they come up with a lot of specific that is uh, you know we have to really appreciate them much awareness is there but again there is a lot of um, challenges between the local the rural entrepreneurs and the urban entrepreneurs though technology is connecting all of us still so many businesses are facing the challenge of uh, you know funding and marketing and technology and mentoring and what not there is always that part but we have to adapt to technology we have to embrace because it has helped me save time and that's why i am uh, you know urging you all to use one or two technology that might save time maybe your productivity or your daily routine or your mental health or your sleep there is an app for sleep as well 20 30 minutes you you know you are you are on the app then you go to sleep it's such a good thing for people who are not able to sleep they can make use of it and there is this another app i forgot its name uh, let's say there are like a few vegetables in your refrigerator and you key in the vegetable names and it will tell you what recipes you can actually make <laughs> that's really interesting right it can save time so a lot of such apps are there and there is one app uh, you know i met one of the uh, ai powered uh, businesses uh, you know the founder uh, and this app can actually this is the first ai powered um, you know app which can minute the meetings that are happening it can record everything and it can transcribe in 90 languages so we might miss out on all uh, you know whatever we discussed here but there are uh, innovators and creators who are coming up with a lot of new uh, technologies and of course ai in agriculture needless to say be it you know pest management or identifying um, the diseases or uh, you know uh, unmanned vehicles or autonomous vehicles um, rainfall prediction lot of things are happening so let us not get into deep into that because the each and every domain healthcare agriculture logistics and um, you know uh, medicine whatever it is a completely vast one of course we cannot discuss 
everything here because so much knowledge has to be there in order to discuss a lot. So we are just discussing in general how these tools can actually save your time, money and effort. Uh, see, I, uh, when I started, I didn't have great budgets. You know, I never spent uh, a penny to Google. And since 2013 till date, um, as a digital marketing specialist, I have maintained my page on higher rankings out of crores of websites online. I am on top page for more than 200 key phrases, which means I don't pay Google, but I get clients on my website. So if you are running on a zero budget and if you really want to build such a great ecosystem, because when, when it comes to women empowerment, even the government is trying hard to help women, you know, uh, come out of their comfort zone because mobility is a challenge. You know, there are a lot of domestic violence issues going on and there are a lot of social taboos, a lot of challenges are there. Despite that, we could see that so many women are emerging as uh, successful entrepreneurs because of the government, because of the initiatives taken by various organizations. Yeah. I last. No, no, last. Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Jacomo wants to add something. Let us give, you want to add, substantiate uh, what I told or you want to ask a new question? Uh, no, neither. <laughs> neither, okay. Neither. No, I really want to thank Mahalakshmi ji for a fantastic presentation. And I, I told Shikhar because I noted the word badaga. Now, I want to spend a few minutes. I want to clarify that also. Badaga <laughs> doesn't mean northern. No? I no, didn't no, want no, to interrupt. No. Yeah. no, that's what I happen to know a bit about Badagas. Badagas are the most disadvantaged, disadvantaged and backward community in the district of Nilgiris in Tamil Nadu. And Sorry. Uh, Nilgiris in Tamil Nadu. And uh, I mean, I have uh, seen their houses. They are something like uh, igloos. Uh, no. Those are Toda, sir. Oh, sorry. Ha. Toda, is Toda I'm community. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. So we are also from the indigenous community yeah. and uh, Toda community belongs to the, uh, the SEST. Okay. Uh, thing. Yeah. Sorry. No but fine. No, no. What, what I was trying to get at is that coming from such background and rising to help humanity in her own way in such a wonderful manner, of course, the presentation was great, but I mean, really struck by your, uh, uh, I mean, tremendous service Thank you, that sir. you have uh, Thank you. done in spite of your humble background. Thank, Thank you. you sir. So you'll not believe when I was in my um, early days, you know, like maybe when I was in my school, I was not allowed to go to the shop. Until I did my PG, I was not allowed to go to the shop and I had a very protected upbringing. So uh, even uh, when I was in, um, in a hostel in college, when I was doing my college in Coimbatore, my dad and mom used to come all the way from OT till Coimbatore, pick me up and then go. When I was doing my PG, just imagine a PG graduate being uh, protected. And after coming here to Chennai, I was working in a reputed college. Even then, I was in the hostel and uh, 10 years of hostel life and no, no knowledge about what life is actually. And... Um, uh, before marriage, I would say I was totally dependent, I was naive and I didn't have uh, so much of uh, you know, confidence in me. But after marriage, uh, things changed because my husband gave me the freedom to do what I wanted to do. He let me make a lot of mistakes. He let me uh, explore things by not uh, accompanying me so that I could explore the whole world and I could uh, understand better about life. I think for the past uh, you know, 15 years, uh, it's been a wonderful journey meeting lot of uh, potential uh, entrepreneurs and investors across India that uh, you know actually motivates me giving a motivation lecture maybe for uh, the audience it might motivate but more than the audience we get super motivated yeah thank you okay you have you had a question no no, no, I huh. didn't have a question actually <laughs> I just uh, in the along the list of apps that you were talking about I came across an app that, I mean, I heard about it, that if a speaker is speaking, the a, that app can translate the speech of the speaker in, I don't know, 20, 30 languages. And, but the best thing is in the voice of the speaker. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so that is something maybe we can look forward to because we are always, we have theosophical society branches all over the world, different countries, different languages, so we can yes. utilize that and of course. Just want to thank you for your presentation thank and you. also the work that you're doing. Um, 
as someone who's in India from the United States, it has been an adjustment process for me. It's been 10 years now that I've been adjusting. Perhaps I will never fully adjust, and that's a good thing. Uh, one of the things that is a characteristic of this theosophical society, which I really have never thought of as unusual, but I find perhaps that it is, um, at least during my time here, when you look at the officers of the society, I'm, as a male, I'm a distinct minority. <laughs> I am, you know, out of four officers, I'm the one representative of half of humanity. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at the people here, I mean, over the years, who now have become the heads of our departments, our superintendents, again, the poor men here are uh, overwhelmed. And it's because, I mean, it's not because of any attempt to bring things into a proper balance. It's because a recognition of capacities. And the people who are available, and this is not a, again, this is not an AI decision. This is something where there are capable people uh, who perhaps even for cultural reasons might have been overlooked. But their capacities, when you look at it that way, and when given an opportunity, it's been something that has just blossomed. This place could not run without that. Yeah. And so I just want to say that it's something that seems to be completely in line with what you are trying to bring out on a larger scale. Yes. And I thank you for your work. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, sir. Yeah, so thank you so much. I think it was super interactive, and you seem to be a an energetic crowd. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Ram Kumar sir. Thank you, Tim. And thank you, Nihar. Shikha. Shikha. OK, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry. I think I don't need to s say another vote of thanks or extend, uh, but because already uh, President and Mr. Jay Kumar and rest of the delegates have already expressed their thanks, but still, I feel that really this presentation, uh, not just uh, hybrid uh, leadership, but also along with it, women empowerment, the aspect of women empowerment, including the 50% of the population in that work, and at such a global scale, I mean, 150,000 people, I don't know how many people we meet in our whole life, maybe a couple of thousands, but uh, that's really a commendable job that you are doing and all the best to you for in all your future noble endeavors and uh, before I make closing announcement I would request our president Mr. Tim Boyd to give uh, these books theosophical books as our uh, vote of uh, I mean gratitude to you and these will give you a little bit uh, insight in theosophical teachings of philosophy and uh, more about this place that we call Adiyar. So. And uh, uh, those uh, of you who have missed the earlier Wisdom for Living talks, you can view it always on our YouTube channel, Theosophical Society Ariar. All the channel, all the videos, our recorded videos are there. And since uh, uh, Mahalakshmiji mentioned about these artworks that we have around us, I want to announce that also, uh, that uh, uh, these artworks are from a very famous artist we have among us, uh, Mrs. Hemalata Senapati Patiji. And we have, as you can see, the paintings, sculptures, and metal reliefs. And all of you are welcome to share this with your friends, and they can visit. This exhibition will continue till 26 January, from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And if they want to purchase any of these artworks, they can contact uh, Mrs. Hemalata. And her number, okay, it will be posted. I, the cards are there, so you can collect the cards on your way out. So th thank you once again on behalf of the Theosophical Society. But right now I'm just feeling to end it with a chant. 
if you all permit me to, for the welfare of the whole existence using our thought power. Om Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Mang Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarve Bhavantu सुखिनः सर्वे संतु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चित् दुख भाग भवेत् ओम शांति 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 थैंक यू